Instagram's most loved and hated man, Dan Bilzerian. The king of Instagram, as his PR firm forces every article to call him. The king alpha male. The king alpha male. Danny B, Dan Bilzerian. I just have bitches around me all the time. I'd be jet skiing. I'd be driving around in Ferraris and private jets. You're living like a, a life that doesn't even seem real. Where did Dan get his money from? Your father was a corporate takeover specialist. He went to jail. They're getting straight up sued by their former president. This just looks fake. Allegedly kicking a woman in the face at a nightclub. Did you do that? Um, well... He chucked her? That was Janice. Yeah. Literally Janice Griffith. Allow me to set the scene. The date is February 24th, 2021. A young Instagram influencer is scaling a $63 million Bel Air mansion in hopes of finding its elusive owner, the man with the perfect geometrical beard, Dan Bilzerian. I think we're good. Come on. Dan, are you in there? But what's the deal with this guy? Who, who even is he? On the surface, he looks like a bodybuilder. Comp Bro, he's literally... Okay, you want to know the one thing that will... <clears throat> Do you want to know what describes Dan Bilzerian with one word? Trigger warning, okay? I'm just issuing a random trigger warning. Five, three. That's it. That's all you need to know everything else is overcompensating for that i saw him at the gym one time he literally had two instagram models with him like some rando like micro influencer instagram model andy's and he was literally running at the treadmill and the two girls were waiting side uh, next to him and this was at equinox okay no one that has any sort of real confidence would ever do such a thing Compensating for being 5'9". A fusion of Tony Stark and Hugh Hefner. A professional poker player with lavish taste and a massive online following of over 30 million insecure teenage boys. If a lifestyle of touring the world, sleeping with models, shooting machine guns in the desert, parading around exotic animals, sitting down with meatheads, posing with enormous stacks of cash, partying with major celebrities, and ruining a perfectly good car with a military grade tank seems too good to be true? That's because it is. Dan is a fraud. Dan Bilzerian? He doesn't live here anymore. He was actually exiled from his California dream home just last year, quietly abandoning a key part of his brand that made I guess Eli Webe? that made him the giga alpha wait here. Quietly That guy is Eli Webe or something? Or however you say his last name? Literally one of the one of the owners of Warwick and I think got Warwick 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 the nightclub he owns the nightclub Warwick that dude in the middle abandoning a key part of his brand that made him the giga alpha chat his fans once considered him to be can you write any of this off because it's really promoting your brand and your lifestyle I mean, I have to talk to my accountant about all of it. I don't know. <laughs> but how exactly did we get here? What happened to Dan and the man Bilzerian? Well, that's what I want to find out. But first, we're going to need to go back to where it all began. Daniel Brandon Bulzarian was born on December 7th, 1980 in Tampa, Florida. Coming from humble beginnings. Of course, from fucking Florida, dude. His of mother course. was nothing more than a social worker, with his father being but a simple businessman. You know what kind of businessman, you ask? Uh, you know, just the kind that manipulates the stock market for a living. Really successful businessman. Oh. And then the newspaper headlines are... And I think this is like the late 80s, uh, he's indicted for like tax and security fraud. Yeah. So, you know, I'm actually just kidding about that humble beginnings thing. Hard to grow up in a house like this and still pretend you're self-made, but Dan found a way. So how did you make your money then? Playing poker. You made it all playing poker? Yeah. Wow. This is the funniest part. That like, he's just like a fucking fail son who got carried upwards.
And he just acts like he fucking did it because he played poker. It was so stupid. Ow, that is insane. The point is, Paul Bilzerian had become one of the richest corporate raiders in the entire region by the time Dan was just six years old, setting up multiple trust funds for his two sons before being locked away for fraud in the early 90s. He was then ordered to pay $60 million back to the government, and after he paid back $3 million, he was like, uh-oh, I'm out of money. Anyway, on a completely unrelated note, his son Dan Bilzerian mysteriously won $50 million in one year playing poker, which is more than any professional poker player has made in their entire lifetime. But trust me, we'll get back to Dan's father in a little bit. For now, I want to focus on the man, the myth, the king of Instagram. No. Wow, I wonder how that happened, dude. Must be really lucky. I'm dreaming, I think. Oh, I'm not talking about myself, even though Dan and I do have similar followings. With over 10,000 one night stands under his belt. Wait, wait, wait did I read that right? 10,000? 10,000 one night stands in one house? 17 chicks. <laughs> and I, mean, I remember I had six, nine times in one day. I was like so proud of myself. Well, I mean, it's good Dan would never lie to us though. I mean, I guess we're just gonna have to take his word for it. He objectifies women on a mainstream platform, normalizing women as background rather than as actual human beings. In other words, you make women, according to them, props. Yeah, I mean, I guess I said the same thing about Hugh Hefner, right? <laughs> Is that supposed to be a, a good thing? I mean, they've said the same thing about Hugh Hefner. <laughs> Bro, for all of Hugh Hefner's uh, problems, Hugh Hefner also literally like, he also had a fucking revolutionary magazine. Like Playboy, in many respects, did a lot of shit that was, for the time, controversial and also uh, pretty progressive. Lol, porn sip? No, I mean, Hugh Hefner is uh, creepy as fuck, certainly. But the reality is like, the reality is like uh, Playboy as a, as a business did a, a fuckload. Why does everybody say Jarvis, my beloved? Who is this person? I don't know who this person is. Everyone is, everyone lit the fuck up. The screen lit up when this person came on. Jarvis Johnson? Jarvis is an amazing, selling sex isn't progressive. I don't know. I think your mom is pretty progressive. I don't know why you're shitting on her like this. I, yeah, they did. Um, I don't know. I, uh. I just take pictures and the women are there, so. I don't yeah, know. right. I mean, that's bullshit. It's, it's I literally know. I know the behind the scenes process of this, dude. That's bullshit. He doesn't just like fucking take pictures and women happen to be there. He literally pays them to be there. It runs a similar structure to how uh, how a uh, prostitution ring would run. Like there is a female ringleader. Usually that is a model or something, and she's like the mother of the group who then brings on other models uh, to be involved in the same shit. To interpretation, I mean, people can- What is your that. interpretation? Uh, that, you know, I'm just, I have a bunch of women hanging around. But make no mistake, he wasn't always the zenith of peak male vitality, though. In fact, he actually dropped out of four separate high schools over the span of three years, even being arrested for bringing a machine gun on <laughs> for bringing a machine gun on campus his senior year. <laughs> so explain what led to you getting thrown in jail your senior year. Um, well, um, a machine gun and a shotgun in my vehicle on school grounds would be probably what led to that. <laughs> and this was right after Columbine happened, which is kind of bad timing, if you will. Galaxy brain stuff here from our boy Dan. But after pulling a Vince Staples, he decided to abandon school altogether and enlist in the Navy right after graduating? I, I think he graduated, I'm not actually sure. All I know is that he is said to have spent about four years in the Navy, apparently going through 510 grueling days of SEAL training with two broken legs. You know, I done everything that I was supposed to do. I made it through hell week with broken legs. Like, no, you I did just, not. And I just, I went into medical and I asked them to look at my legs. I ran for like two miles and just destroyed them even more just because I was just so sick of the f***ing military. I just want to get out. Don't tread on me, brother. Think under the UCMJ, that's actually a crime. He's not running for two miles with broken legs if he's truly hurt. It just seems like this is made for social media. Dan's strained relationship. It is. It's totally made up. It's completely made up. 
Remember when he tried to be in this movie and then like they literally wrote him out? Relationship with the US military becomes a little dicey, so stick with me here. The first step in becoming a Navy SEAL is completing basic underwater demolition training, known as BUDS for short. Meant to test physical and mental stamina, the 24 week program is described as demanding and intense. Most trainees don't even make it past this one phase, but Dan has insisted he spent over a year and a half on BUDS alone. Yeah, the same guy who started. I love this channel. I don't know if I've ever actually watched any of their videos, but I fucking love the channel, dude. Very good. Very good channel. Congratulations to Jay Aubrey for having a good ass channel. To land a jet ski in the water. <laughs> But he claims his extended training and frequent rollbacks had to do with his two stress fractures. I had broken legs for like a year and a half or a year and seven months. It was That's insane. It was basically like, they're like, okay, well this guy's legs are just never gonna fucking heal. So why wasn't it healing? I'm still confused. Well, because I went through SEAL training, that kind of fucked him just up Just fucked a little, him up for a little bit. Dan never officially became- Dude, Joe Rogan doesn't realize that like, having two broken legs and going through buzz training is functionally impossible like how are you how are you constantly talking about the physiology of fighters and shit i'm a seal instead being kicked out just two days before passing to the next phase on account of the safety violation at the gun range or in his words no real good reason yeah i'm sure there is no real good reason i'm gonna give you guys some perspective for somebody to be rolled back from training two days prior to graduation there has to be something pretty significant. Um, they they call Navy SEALs often the million dollar man, and that's because how much it costs to train these guys and how much time goes into that. So um, he doesn't dive into that, but I will say that does bring some red flags or questions. You have to have done something really bad or be very highly disliked, I would say. Rumors of Dan falling asleep during training and getting into arguments with officers have since circulated online. And although I have no real way to verify any of these testimonies, just the thought of Dan's former class making up songs to mock him after he got dropped is really beautiful to me. And this instructor that didn't like me, he just, he couldn't even find excuses the third time. He just admin dropped me. I didn't even know that was like a thing. I didn't even know you could get admin drop, but yeah. Hey, a broken leg and an honorable discharge still gave our man in the ledge $6,000 disability allowance, so. You know, I was getting the GI Bill and the uh, VA was paying me and I was getting grants and everything for, uh, for school. And so I was making pretty good money for a college student. Despite, yes, completing about 99% of the military's toughest training, his love-hate relationship with the Navy extends even further into his later years. When he paid his way into a military film, <laughs> in 2013, pumping one million dollars- And then they cut him out of it! dollars into production in exchange for eight minutes of screen time, they ended up cutting down to 60 seconds. Even trying to sue the production company afterwards? Yeah. Actor. What's going on? Nothing, bro. I'm about to get out of here with my girl. What the fuck, man? Whatever. Before any of that, Dan was officially discharged. In desperate need of a purpose and a place to go, he did what any affluent dickhead would do and became a businessman. Fun fact, Lone Survivor was made up, much like many of the fucking uh, Navy SEAL uh, <clears throat> fan fictions that are written from ex-SEALs. Like, super made up. Literally, most of the fucking Navy SEAL shit that you see, read, and then watch in movie form, completely made up. Go ahead, hogs. Get mad at me all you fucking want. It is totally made up. I will refuse to believe it. Go ahead, sue me, Chris Kyle. Oh, wait, you can't. Well, you know, for obvious reasons, but also because you fucking lost. Yeah, brother. You know what I'm talking about, brother? Uh, I'm doing a terrible fucking... I'm doing a terrible fucking impersonation of... Of, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, Jesse Ventura. Chris Kyle wasn't Lone Survivor. That was American Sniper. Yeah, I know. I was talking about a separate SEAL or a, a separate fucking sniper dude who was also regarded as a hero by the American military and idolized, even though he was a gigantic piece of shit, a fucking massive racist, and also lied in his book about beating up uh, Jesse Ventura at a bar. And then Jesse Ventura fucking uh, turned around and, uh, and, and sued his bitch ass. 
and literally sued his wife after he was murdered and won successfully. And people were like, how the fuck are you? Like, how are you suing a grieving widow? And he was like, I don't care. Chris Kyle shouldn't have decided to lie about me and his wife shouldn't have continued the lie. And then he won. Yep. Absolutely fucking the balls on Jesse Ventura, dude. Like this, okay? Cojones, like that. Show vid or it didn't happen? Okay. I mean, go ahead. Let's do it. Chris Kyle was a racist? Dog, Chris Kyle literally was a perpetual liar and actually lied about sniping black people in the aftermath of Katrina, okay? Like, the kinds of lies that you don't actually have to fucking tell. The only American military hero that I can think of that is, like, proselytized and famous is Pat Tillman, okay? And he was fucking executed, and the government literally hid his death from his family, okay? The circumstances of his death. That's the, that's the fucking hero right there. Based, anti-imperialist, Friends with fucking Noam Chomsky, Pat Tillman, who was executed. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you this, like, super cool fucking Jesse Ventura video, and then we're going to get back to this. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura says he can now move on with his life. Well profited from his wife for a new start. <laughs> Everyone see the smile? That ear-to-ear -ear grin represents what Jesse Ventura feels is a somewhat happy ending to a five-year ordeal which he says began with a lie. This was fake news, people, and this was fake news at its finest. In 2012, former Navy SEAL Chris Kyle released a memoir titled American Sniper, detailing his deadly and distinguished years in the military. It also included a story where he punched a man who said derogatory remarks about the SEALs in 2006. Personal story segment tonight. Kyle later identified that man as Ventura. Now you don't mention his name, but everybody knows who that is. Number one, that, that happened? You knocked him out? Yeah. Well, I knocked him down. Knocked him down. The former governor says it never happened and filed a defamation lawsuit in 2012. Ventura won the case and was awarded nearly $2 million, but another court overturned the decision. A second trial was in the works until both sides reached a settlement. You don't pay if you're innocent. You go to court. That's what I did. And if you're the other side and you do pay, that tells you who's a, who, who is telling the truth right there. Despite his victory, Ventura says Kyle's story and the process of vindicating himself damaged his reputation. To me, the truth meant more than money. My reputation meant more than money. He added that the book's... Jesse Ventura feels like one of those people who have weird overlap between Democracy Now! viewers and Joe Rogan viewers. A little bit like Alex Jones, too. If he was just a pure Democracy Now! Uh, Joe Rogan overlap, then he would be me. I am the Democracy Now! Joe Rogan overlap. He's a little bit further to the conspiratorial left uh, than I am. I love him. I love him. He's brilliant. I, I, I am a huge fan of his. Don't get me wrong. But he, he is uh, way, 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 way more in the conspiracy left. And I don't even mean like Brace Belden conspiracy left. I mean like fucking... Um, anyway, anyone who questioned this doesn't know who Jesse is. Yeah. Publisher Harper Collins never apologized. I'll end by just saying my apology is in the bank. We reached out to Harper. He's so awesome. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Were you high when you sued Chris Kyle's widow? Was I high? You know, that's a question and I expect it from someone from Fox. Just no. A serious question? No, no it ain't. No it ain't, because I never sued the widow. I sued him. Okay, well, she's suffering a lot of pain right No, she isn't. How do you know that? Because insurance pays for it all. She hasn't paid one cent. How do I know it? It's my case. So you stand the case, by that? The case got overturned because the truth came out. Insurance is paying for all of it. It isn't costing his family a cent. That's the way legal works if you do your homework. Would you apologize to her? No. She should apologize to me for the lie that her husband told about me. Yes! Oh! Why would I apologize? I didn't do anything. You only apologize if you've done something wrong, pal. The He's so sick, dude. I love him. But he hates Fox News. I'm confused. Dude, 
what the fuck is wrong with you guys? How do you not understand? Jesse Ventura is a perfect, like, distillation of Democracy Now!, which is hyper left, and Alex Jones, okay? I don't know how to describe it to you if you can't comprehend those terms. Embrace, but older? Okay. He's way, way fucking more, uh... I think he's cooler than Brace. Sorry. I mean, love Brace. I think he's cooler. I think Brace would agree as well. Major. Using his disability money towards enrolling at the University of Florida, joining a frat, and of course, falling in love with the game of poker. <laughs> Dan was only a freshman in college when he embarked on his first ever poker match, taking a liking to the game almost immediately. Staying up late and losing a ton of sleep was worth it if it meant getting to play an extra game with his classmates in between important business reading. This motherfucker literally looks like tiny Steven Crowder, by the way. So glad he actually, uh, you know, Got a beard. Things. By his sophomore year, Dan was addicted, even reportedly taking out a loan on his car and selling three of his most expensive guns so he had more money to gamble with. So I like I went like flat broke my sophomore year and I actually had to like sell three of my guns. Um, and then I took that money and went and like played on this gambling boat. Take a boat to the boat because it had to be in international waters. Being coached by his younger brother, Adam. A Imagine painting your nails in your early 30s, la la la. Um, your mom seems to like them, so I don't know why you're so insecure about it. Probably because, you know, I fucked your mom, and she seems to enjoy them. Blue season. What's your opinions on Canada? Too nice of a country for you, my friend. My guy, you bash America, yet your parents... Oh, God, this is like literally a fucking Canadian Steven Crowder guy who's also a fucking RP nerd. Oh, no, Toronto Blue Jays fan, L, RP nerd. Oh, God, oh, no, what are you doing here, my friend? What's going on? Oh, no. L after L after L, I was going to send you to the gulag, but... Guess what? I think I'm gonna keep you in here as a pet. Sometimes we need more Canadian uh, idiots in here, you know? A lot of the Canadians, they're too smart. They, uh, they have healthcare, they understand politics. You, on the other hand, my friend. Great, new pet. That tells a sad story. This tells the story of Sad from Pepe Lab. A real professional poker player, it wasn't until his 25th birthday when he actually set foot in a real brick and mortar casino, ready to prove his skills in the treacherous world of gamblers, sharks, and billionaires. Oh god, this three bet size on the flop. Dan's doing a money weighted to this Ford Explorer a year ago. Wait, let's get one thing straight. I'm an idiot, okay? I'm not gonna pretend I know the first thing when it comes to poker. I'm really not good at any game not called Mario Kart or Super Monkey Ball, for that matter. But I have read the comments under gambling videos of Dan, and I know his skills have been repeatedly brought into question by real experts of the game. And I think it's safe to say he isn't exactly the most well-respected in the community. Even Dan himself will tell you it was never his life goal to become the greatest poker star of all time or anything. He just wanted to be the rich asshole in the background, having his beard stroked by models. And that much is totally understandable. But it becomes a little more disingenuous when you start to attribute your enormously unfathomable wealth to your non-existent poker skills. I mean, even the most professional, well-known players in the world can barely scratch Dan's estimated net worth of 200 million. I moved to LA. And I started playing a lot of these poker games and it just, I don't know, kind of snowballed. Like I beat one guy for 54 million and- 54 million. Yeah. So- Poker players make- Reminder, I know, I know, 1330. I know there's naked ladies. Okay. Um, this video is sick, by the way. I hope you guys are enjoying it as well.
make a lot of money, but not enough to justify the incredible spending habits of Danny Boy here. We're talking $50,000 for a bed frame, okay? He would need to be one of the absolute greatest to ever live, and we all know that just isn't f***ing true. All in all, I love this mini fridge, dude. My mom, I know one of you guys sent this to me, and I never used it. And then, cause it makes, it makes like an annoying ass fucking sound, but I don't really hear it cause the AC is on usually, but my mom put it back in there and put some fucking, you know, diet Coke and stuff in it. And now I just love like pulling it up, putting it on the desk, opening it up, pulling a fucking diet Coke and then putting it back down. It's the cutest shit, dude. Dope. While Dan did play very aggressive, I wouldn't say that he played all that great. In fact, there was some serious button clicking going on in this match. I think that maybe he could beat some high stakes, very soft live games, but on the internet, he's a fish in the water. His lackluster abilities may have been enough to make him look cool in front of his audience of middle schoolers, but something about the way he presented himself in interviews and talked about his wealth just wasn't adding up. But his Instagram numbers definitely were. After breaking up with his playmate girlfriend in 2011, Dan vowed to live his- Okay, let's see. Let's see what's TOS. Wait, Wubby didn't want to show this? Oh, there's titties in there. Oh, shit! Oh, what the fuck? Oh my god! A wooga! Dan vowed to live his life as a bachelor to the fullest extent from then on out, using the power of the internet to transform himself into a shining beacon of inspiration for sex. I always click, I always want to know if I know any of these girls, you know what I mean? Nope. Sexless teenage boy. Nope. Boys in pastel shorts all over the nation. First joining. Wait, what was it? RTBA, what was the, what was the timestamp exactly? <clears throat> 1330, right? The vanity obsessed world of Instagram in 2012. The perfect platform for Dan to show up. Nope. Damn, we're all so his hot. exhilarating lifestyle of posing with his brother. Hold on, let me go back. Oh god, that shirt is so ugly. Platform for Dan to show off. His exhilarating lifestyle of posing with his Nope. His brother and chickens. Okay, his posts started off about as tame as you can get. A clear contrast to what they'd become over the following years. Somewhere along the way, Dan realized the more extreme his pics were, the more attention they would get. And began posting anything so long as he got those Oh, you know Lindsay Palis? I do know Lindsay Palis, who is literally in this photo right now. So, yes. Also, the funniest part about this is it says... Senin tanımak istiyorum. Sen çılgın adamın dibisin lütfen. Says Ferdi Topuz. Turkish, of course. Of course, there's a fucking Turkish guy in the comments of the photo of Dan Bilzerian with a bunch of sexy ladies, including my friend, Lindsay Palis, who's a very nice person. Sweet, sweet like. Oh, wait, there's like... I mean, this one's like... and follows. He quickly built up a reputation of partying, drinking, Thinking, having drug laced orgies with oh this was the photo that was like definitely bad supermodels and having two heart attacks by the age of 32 i got no fucking idea Doctor, like, okay to be fair like none of those people are supermodels like no that is uh that's unfortunately above dan bilzerian's pay grade you can imagine the turkish guy jerking off that picture trying to not look at dan yeah very important that you're thorough and that you tell us everything. We can't give you certain things if, you know, they mix with other drugs. And I'm just like, you know, I was smoking some pot and my mom kind of like perks up. You know, I, I did a little bit of cocaine and my dad's like looks over at me. You know, and I think I might have taken a little bit of Viagra. And then my girlfriend's like, you motherfucker. And I'm just like, ah, maybe, maybe. And the doctor's like, it's very important that you tell us how much. I was like, like, yeah, I think like 200 milligrams. The doctor was 200 milligrams. Yeah, I guess the cocaine and Viagra might, might have that effect. But at least he got to meet Michael Jackson's doctor, supposedly. Gracing headlines for some of his more outrageous stunts, including the time he was arrested for bomb making charges. Come on, Dan. What the f 
After blowing up his own tractor trailer, he pled no contest for failing to extinguish a fire out in the open. No jail time, no weapon restrictions, nothing. Just a measly fine of about 17 grand, which he only received because it happened on public property. Not to mention the time he launched porn star Janice Griffith off his rooftop. There are some details that I don't feel comfortable talking about right now. Has uh, Dan called you up to apologize? He actually did not ever make an apology. Okay, to be fair, at least it's like, it's censored. It's fucking censored. Chill. I did not know her at the time. <clears throat> or like six hours ago. Oh, hell yeah. You can make some faces, like angry faces. You can make an ahigao face if you want. We can make an emote of that if you want. Just Everyone does ahigao face. Is there you go. Is that it? Did it? I can't look at it when I do it. I know. It looked really good. <laughs> I lost. I lost chat. Missing the pool below and smashing her ankle on the way down. Thanks to his scumbag legal defense team, he wasn't sued. Unlike the time he kicked a woman in the face at a nightclub in steel-toed boots, in which case he was sued. Vanessa Castano claims in a new lawsuit filed by her attorney, Keith Davidson, that Bilzerian was on the stage at the LIV nightclub and kicked her in the face with military boots. She says she began bleeding from the face and eye. Bilzerian's people say he kicked her because he was struggling to help another woman on stage but Castano was blocking him. And I thought chivalry was dead. Turns out Dan just wanted to protect his girl while brutalizing another one. Can't think of anything more considerate. It almost reminds me of the time he tried to play hero during an active shooting. Holy fuck, this girl just got shot in the fucking head. It's so fucking crazy. Dan Bl Wait, he was at the country thing? Oh my god, I can't believe- Did I memory hold Dan Bilzerian at the fucking Steven Paddock shooting, dude? Zarian was one of 22,000 people in attendance the night a 64-year-old man opened fire at a Las Vegas music festival in October 2017. During the worst mass shooting event in American history, Dan could be seen running amongst the crowd, documenting his live experience to his online following. So I had to go grab a gun, I'm fucking headed back. Fucking so crazy, some kind of... Mass shooting, fucking guy had a heavy caliber weapon for sure. Saw a girl fucking get shot in the face right next to her brain. Did I cover this? How did I forget everything about this? I learned Bilzerian was there on your stream ages ago. I can't believe I literally covered this story. You guys are telling me I covered this story and I don't even remember it. Fucking hanging out. Wanting to live up to the gun-toting macho man image he'd always exhibited, Dan was determined to do whatever he could to assist the situation. And I guess he figured the best way to do that was by begging to borrow a random cop's gun while people around him were literally dying. Get the fuck away from me right now! Oh no! Oh my... Fucking God, dude, what a chode dick. What a fucking psychopath, dude. Someone to be astronauts or firefighters when they grow up. I want to be Dan Bilzerian. Proof. Proof. I'm being sarcastic, dickhead. That's fine. I don't know who you are. Keep moving. I don't Being know the who guy who was once credited for. That's awesome, dude. Wait. Keep moving. I don't know who you are. Dude, don't fucking. You know better than that. I'm just saying. I don't know who the fuck you are. I just showed you my credit. That's fine. I don't know who you are. Keep moving. Being the guy who was once credited for saying his greatest fear is that someone will break into his house and he won't know what gun to shoot them with, he kind of became known for this menacing reputation. So the reactions from what viewers saw that night were mixed. Some expected him to do more than run for shelter, while others might argue he shouldn't have distracted officers from attempting to defuse an active shooting situation. But one thing I can tell you for certain is that this wouldn't be the only time his values were questioned, and it sure wouldn't be the last time he experienced controversy. According to all estimations, Ignite burned through over 100 million with about 2.5 million in gross profit in 2020. Yoda! It's insane! Where did the money go? Dan! What's up? DM me!
Where's the money? At the end of the day, money's really freedom to me because when you got a lot of money, you can do whatever you want. Nobody can tell you what to do. But before we get into that, it's time for an ad. The wonder- He spent all of that, all of that money on mansion parties, dude. Literally all of it. Wonderful and amazing saints over at Raycon. 50. More Raycon compact design. These six pumps them up to the channel. About to drop out once. For the longest time, Dan insisted the bulk of his income was a direct result of his poker earnings, turning himself from a broke college kid to a self made millionaire through his late 20s. But not everyone was convinced. For starters, Dan had only played in one public poker tournament, all the way back in 2009 when he came in 180th place and walked away with $36,000. The Bilzerian brothers have been enjoying their family reunion as well, both still in this thing. That's Adam adding to his chip stack but at another table his brother dan is all in after the flop with ace high against the pocket tens of jonathan tamayo dan bilzerian has to have an ace on the river the river card is a king tamayo wins the pot and knocks off dan bilzerian he became known for playing loose aggressive in the eyes of what did i tell you about the beard i know my beard theory, beard theory is right dude my beard theory has always been right dude always you understand me Always, if you're any guy on the planet can be a fucking seven if they can grow a beard, shower, and get a good haircut that fits their head. Any guy. That's the real theory, dude. Fuck communism. That's my real theory, dude. Dialectical materialism. Psh, more like beard theory, dude. If you can't grow a beard, you can still, again, work out, shower, find a haircut that fits your head. Automatic seven. No matter what. Like, that's your starting point, okay? A little bit of good drip, too. The fellow poker sharks. Even reportedly losing $2.3 million on a simple coin toss, according to GQ. Still, Dan claims to have made the majority of his money through non-traceable cash. man in the chat says, 16 with no beard. Dude, you're 16. Are you dumb? I couldn't grow facial hair when I was 16 either. Look at my fucking beard now, dude. Look. Look at this. You see this? This grew in like a fucking week. Okay? When I was 16 years old, all I ever wanted was to be hairy because I hated that, like, we would get kicked out of every fucking bar we went to because I was the baby face one in my group. And my entire life was like, fuck, man, I wish I wish I could fucking grow facial hair. I wish I didn't have a baby face. Guess what, dude? Be careful what you wish for. OK, you might get it. And it fucking sucks now. Now people say I'm old games with billionaires in private which is extremely convenient wouldn't you say especially considering his instagram flexing began around the same time his father's trust funds finally became accessible the trust funds uh i guess you were entitled to one when you turned 30 one when you turn 35. Um. Dan's father, Paul Bilzerian, made a name for himself back in the 80s when corporate rating was at an all-time high. According to Investopedia, investors would target failing companies whose assets appeared to be undervalued, buy large enough shares to give them a controlling position at the company, and then use their power to artificially drive up the stock price, either through internal management changes or by using their voting power to install hand-picked members to the board of directors. As long as the company's value went up, the investors would make an absolute killing. A practice that was questionable at best and straight up illegal at worst, depending on how you went about it, I guess. By 1989, though, the government had charged Paul with fraud and conspiracy, failing to disclose his ownership of various companies and selling his holdings right after their stock prices skyrocketed. Insider trading in its purest form. And if only Paul had been a little more discreet, he probably- I love that people, like, realize that someone like Dan Bilzerian it, it was using their fucking daddy's money the entire time. Like, what did you think? You think a guy that lives like that made their own money, dude? Get the fuck out of here. Is he Armenian? Yes, he is Armenian. Probably would have been able to get away with it. Well, he still kind of did, but not without being slapped with a $63 million fine and spending 13 months in federal prison for a ruling he called unjust. The whole time he'd been telling me like, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to jail because it was, you know, in the newspapers, the kids were asking me, so I'd ask him and he's like, oh no, definitely not. He was always like this crazy, like eternal optimist. Dan barely got to see his father growing up as it was, naming that lack of attention as one of the many 
driving forces behind his eccentric lifestyle. But Paul's arrest would prove itself traumatizing for Dan. Constantly harassed by kids at school over his father being a Wall Street felon. So we're going to school and he's like, yeah, but Bro, when you go to jail as a banker, like, you have really fucked up. Like, you had to have either been the fall guy for an operation or you just fucked up super hard. I've never met a banker who's been to jail that I don't think deserved it, okay? The barrier of entry for financial criminals is so fucking high that you need to do the financial equivalent of like a, like a, like a quintuple homicide in broad daylight with an automatic rifle to be able to uh, get prosecuted beyond like a slap on the fucking wrist. Our entire economic organization literally revolves around letting people like him get away scot-free, okay? Or you have to rip off rich people. I've always said this about Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff didn't go to prison because he uh, fucked over people. He, he went to prison because he fucked over rich people. By the way, I'm going to jail, and um, I mean, I think he put it a little bit more eloquently than that, but anyways, it was, uh... How'd you take it? That sucked, man. Pocket watching other dudes is weird as fuck. Why do y'all even care? Says Grandpa Zoomer. You think an in-depth analysis on an incredibly famous fucking is pocket watching other dudes? Dog, why are you pocket watching dudes, man? Uh, I don't know, man. And I, you know, you gotta. Because we're jealous, dude. You go to school and, and all these kids are making fun of you and your dad's going to jail. It's like, I was kind of traumatizing moment. Through a complex network of offshore banks and family partnerships, however, the Bolzerian family managed to keep living in the 28,000 square foot palace for about 20 years. Plenty of time for Dan and his brother Adam to grow up in the mansion Paul dubbed his own Taj Mahal, even while the SEC scrambled to locate the tens of millions he owed the government, only paying back an estimated four of the 63 million before filing bankruptcy? Hey, come on, dude, you were not bankrupt. <laughs> In 1997, with the SEC still chasing Mr. Bilzerian's assets, ownership of the mansion is transferred to a Nevada partnership owned by an offshore trust that initially has, according to court records, Mr. Bilzerian and his wife as beneficiaries and trustees. Whoa, his family crazy. continues living there even as Mr. Bilzerian, in a court filing, has said he has no assets. Going to extreme lengths to keep ownership of the house and his wealth, to the point where he'd rather go to prison than ever admit he was lying about his finances. To this day, that 50 plus million dollars has never been tracked down, but it all had to go somewhere, right? You know, I mean, you read the detractors or comments they've made that, uh, oh, nobody can make a hundred million dollars or whatever it is playing poker. He, uh, yeah. you know, he's just, you yeah, know, poker is kind of yeah, he he, sucks, the, the way he says he makes his money, but he's really gotten it from the, uh, you know, trust funds and you didn't, you didn't take it. I gave it all back, so. Really? Yeah. Uh, I gave it to my brother. Why? Uh, I just, I don't know, I didn't need it, didn't want it, didn't care. <coughs> Bro, this guy is, this guy is such a fucking liar, dude. He's such a Weasley little liar, dude. Still lying. Still lying to his audience, dude. He's never not lying. It's crazy, man. Dan has never denied the existence of a trust fund under his or his brother's name, but he has given conflicting testimonies regarding the amount of money he's actually taken from them. So first he didn't accept any of it and instead handed everything over to his little brother because as we all know, Dan hates money that isn't his. But we'll get to that soon. Point is, he later went back on his word admitting he did- Wait, uh oh, I don't know if this like TOS- Did take a little bit from the trust. How much? Many of estimated damages now would be around 100 million. He acknowledged the benefit from front, which kicked in 30. I have no idea. As of now, there isn't definitive proof that Dan and his brother. It's the funniest thing about liars like this, by the way, is that they lie about like such unnecessary shit. Like no one, like no one believes that this person made his money playing poker. Like just fucking be honest. You know what I mean? Be honest. Like the ad break that's coming right now. You know, at the top of the hour. I'm honest with you, there's an ad break. There's a 60 second ad break, right? 
brother's trust funds were made up of entirely SEC money, but the evidence doesn't exactly say otherwise, does it? <laughs> At the end of the day, it'll probably always remain a mystery just how much Dan really inherited from his Wall Street criminal father. So it's been so long that I'm just used to, you know, I, I like, I never cared if people thought that I was good. I never gave a shit, you know, if, you know, how people thought that I got my money. I still don't. I don't give a shit. They think I, you know, got it all from a trust. I, I, don't I mean, care. not at all. Like, I mean, somebody, if you've like earned it through, you know, your own intellect and hard work, it doesn't bother you at all that there's like some out there that like think that you, you, it was just handed to you? No, I, I don't really, you know, the thing is like, there's so many people praising me. I just, I don't even like concern myself with the opinion. I mean, it Dan Bilzerian skipped leg day like I skipped head day, okay? It sucks that I've lost all of my privacy pretty much and I can't go anywhere without, you know, people coming up to me and, you know, wanting pictures and this and that. By 2017, he had partied with Steve Aoki, bought his way into a Matt Damon movie, and hooked up with 10,000 women. <laughs> what could possibly be in... Wait, I want to see, I want to see these girls, dude. Hooked up with 10,000... Like, imagine coming to Los Angeles with hopes and dreams that you're going to be a fucking actress. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm going to be an actress. Like, I'm going to make it big in Hollywood. I'm the hottest girl in my small town in Kansas. And then you come to Los Angeles, you meet a fucking promoter, and the promoter takes you to a Dan Bilzerian party, and you're like, this is the wealthiest shit I've ever seen. And all of a sudden, you're just, this is what you're doing now. Now you're just appearing in photos with Dan Bilzerian. Thousand women. You know what I mean? That's it. That's your... There's, there's worse ways to make money, but goddamn, dude. That's like kind of sad <laughs> what? like i want to know what these people are doing now you know yeah girl on the right knew what the fuck was up what could possibly be in store next for the man who had done it all well launching his own cbd business of course so what is the most exciting thing about the cannabis industry today why should people damn tim the tap man was there that's crazy i'll be excited about your product uh, I mean, because it's going to be one of the best products in the industry and it's going to be consistent across state lines. We're going to have global distribution. I imagine all the strains are just infused with Dan Blazarian's pubic hair. Hey, and then, yeah. like, they just somehow, like, create an STD that he's had from, like, a model or some shit. Yeah. So maybe they just name it after the model and then the STD. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> In hopes of becoming the first premium global cannabis brand, Dan Bolzarian launched the company Ignite, selling everything from cannabis products to clothing, vapes, and beverages. Dude, how do you fuck up a cannabis business in like 2019, 2020? Like, you really gotta try hard to fuck up a cannabis business, I feel like. When he, when he started the, the marijuana thing, like, it was virtually impossible not to make money. Like, you had to have been just straight up taking the piles and piles of money and just lighting it on fire, okay? It makes no sense that he fucked it up. This fucking guy was plastering his stupid goat logo on anything he could get his greasy fingers on. $39.99 for placebo gummies? Like, if this were the Lorax, I'm sure Dan would find a way to slap the Ignite logo on a bottle of air too. But by February 2019, Ignite was off to the races. With the brand finally going public on the Canadian stock market, debuting at a share price of about $2.51. All the meanwhile, the Ignite House YouTube channel, hosted by models Desi and Kayla began pumping out lifestyle vlog type content that showcased even more details of Dan's highly luxurious daily routine. <laughs> <laughs> you want to run naked to Elon's house? Yep. No. She's like, it's funny. No. <laughs> no. You're right. Fail. Everybody wanted to do it. Fail. Right, I'll give somebody. I'll give. Any I think girl. Dan should run naked. All right, I'll give <laughs> if any of y'all do it, for, I'll give you fifty thousand. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Somebody get her a fucking bicycle. I mean, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> she's gonna knock on his door. If he answers the door, 50,000. If he answers the door. Yeah. I just want to point out that people who are like, uh, you know, sex work is bad. This is like, like, that is so, so much worse. Like, there is nothing wrong with like doing sex work, but this, oh my lord. What if he does it? Hard. No 10, deal. 10,000 just for going. <laughs> My Instagram is Redhead Ray, R A Y E. So. There you go, guys. You can stop asking she now. She loves pick pics. Slide in the DMs. Boom. Yeah, nothing weird or toxic to see here, folks. She's running away. No. She says, no, I can't okay, do I'm it. I'm going to be right back.
She's gonna be back. She's off camera. She's gonna contemplate things. There'll be many. Uber I am not looking her up. Okay, that is not what I'm doing on Instagram right now. I'm not doing that. Please don't say that I'm doing that on my tertiary monitor. I'm not doing that, and also not finding uh, that uh, that 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 Instagram thing that she's saying is not. It doesn't exist. It literally does not exist. I just uh, a premonition. I just knew that it didn't exist. I I didn't look it up. Uber driver is checking her out as they drive by there. Along with the new brand, Dan also boasted his massive purchase of a $63 million mansion on CNBC with the guy from Shark Tank, completely decked out with a 12-foot waterfall, infinity pool, tennis courts, and a parking lot fit for a fucking airplane. Not a bad start, especially considering Dan's rampant social media presence reaching an estimated half a billion people every month. The company should have no problem getting off the ground and selling CBD oil to the masses, right? Right? <laughs> right? Well, maybe. Oh my god. Billion people every month. The company should have no problem getting off the ground and selling CBD oil to the ah! I know her. That's is right. <laughs> right? Well, maybe Dan should have stayed in business school. The mansions, the yachts, the parties, the models. How does Dan Bozarian, the globe trotting, cash stacking, gun toting, Instagram boasting, partying, playboy, do it. According to a lawsuit filed this week, he doesn't. Dan Bilzerian rents his house and charges the rest of his six-figure lifestyle to a credit card that someone else pays off. See, in 2019, Ignite made money in two ways. And no, neither of those were actually selling products. Ignite issued and sold shares of its own company's stock, along with raising money via debt, according to Forbes, receiving about $25 million from proceeds of insurance sales, $19 million from convertible debt, and another $23.7 million from a short-term promissory note, which basically meant Ignite was holding on to a bunch of other people's money. And instead of actually using it to benefit the company or their constituents or whatever, it was all wasted by Dan himself. As a 2020 lawsuit would later reveal, Ignite was essentially being used as nothing more than Dan Bilzerian's own personal piggy bank. It was literally his own personal piggy bank to like fuck models and fly around the world. And he just like... I mean, I don't know. It's like... Not the end of the world, you know? There's worse ways to fucking light money on fire, I guess. Crazy. That's right. As Ignite stock value plummeted, Dan continued to swipe the credit card. $15,000 for a ping pong table, $40,000 for a rock climbing wall, $128,000 for a two night stay in London, $130,000 for a photo shoot in the Bahamas, but only because he had to pay all those models. <laughs> These girls are on payroll. Wake up, buddy. Nobody fucking flies on a jet and goes to hang out with this dude. No. Eh. There's, there's plenty of girls who would do it. I think he's wrong about that. Uh, but, but he definitely did pay them. Guys, I already ran the ad. But, yeah, plenty of girls would literally do it just to get the fucking Instagram exposure and blow up. Before TikTok, this is what hot girls did. They would fucking hang out with people like uh, Dan Bilzerian and blow the fuck up. It's not how it works. I kind of like figured out that life is more about setup. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to like set it up so that I could get laid without like having. Homie, don't fucking lie. You would too. I've been living in Los Angeles for what eight years now, and I have one of my friends who now has a fashion brand that you guys know satire is also a promoter do you really think that i haven't had the opportunity to fucking hang out with dan bilzerian are you delusional a bunch of conversations and dates and whatnot so using company money to cover enormous personal expenses would inevitably land dan and his business it's just like very sad that he constantly he was just like paying all of these like young hot girls to just like be around him at all times to do like all this shit that they probably did not think was cool i mean some of them were probably dumb enough to think that it was cool but 
this in massive legal trouble thanks to a lawsuit filed by Ignite's former president, Curtis Heffernan. After refusing to approve of his boss's negligent spending, like, you know, an $800,000 yacht rental, Curtis was quickly axed from the company, to which he responded by suing Dan for wrongful termination immediately after. I mean, the guy was just trying to do his fucking job is all. Outlined in that very lawsuit began to reveal much of what many seem to already speculate regarding Dan's seeming extravagant appearance. The famous Ignite parties hosted at Dan's mansion were some of the most exclusive and ex It's not that exclusive. He's wrong about this. Like, my friends threw these parties. Exotic events in the area. They were synonymous with Dan's image, but that's because it was all he seemed to care about. Van like, if you look at my IMDB credits, the dude who threw this party is also the only fucking film credit I have. It's his company that filmed all these things. I mean, I'm glad that they got the fucking bag, though. That's literally Dan, isn't it? Actually, I can't tell from this angle. Speculate regarding Dan's seemingly extravagant appearance. The famous Ignite parties hosted at Dan's mansion were some of the most exclusive and exotic events in the area. They were synonymous with Dan's image. That's literally Dan Hoban. Oh my god. The man who made the fashion brand Satire that you have all seen. The man who made this fucking phone case. That I, uh, I wear uh, his shit all the time. That's who this person is. Image, but that's because it was all he seemed to care about. Vanity. He wanted to be seen as the guy, the rich asshole who could pull women effortlessly thanks to his iconic branding. But that's all it was. Branding. Ignite yeah, as a company was hollow beyond any of the glitz and glamour seen on Instagram. As noted by Forbes contributor and local CBD expert Chris Roberts, I cover weed and CBD for a living. I live in an area absolutely saturated with CBD products, and I do not think I have ever ever seen an Ignite product out in the wild. Nobody was buying Ignite. As public records show, the company lost a grand total of $50 million its first year, with the stock value shrinking to about 68 cents at the time of me recording this. And as the lawsuit revealed, Dan didn't even own the Ignite house. Instead, he was only leasing it for about $200,000 a month and sticking somebody else with the tab. It's actually really funny that CNBC had to go back and change the title of their tour once the truth came out. He reportedly paid a mind-boggling $65 million for this mega mansion. Dan says he made 50 million bucks playing high-stakes poker. I mean, I have to talk to my accountant about all of it. I don't know. Of course, Dan denies everything. The whistleblowers have alleged and plans on countersuing his former president, but that hasn't stopped anonymous employees from coming out of the woodwork and confirming Heffernan's very claims. Ignite pays for everything, one said. Models, events, yachts, Dan would just have it wrapped with the Ignite logo and all of a sudden it was an Ignite expense and he would send them the bill. Yeah, I mean, one look at his Instagram and that seems to check out. Some claims even seem to show his dad was running the show behind the scenes, which is illegal since he can't touch another American company after being convicted of fraud. Oh, that's why it's listed on the Canadian market. He is, I think he's a St. Kitts citizen and I think he gave up his US citizenship. You don't um, talk to him? I talk to him um, probably four or five times a year. <laughs> You really don't get rewarded for your honesty. In many ways, Dan Bolzerian can be seen as the real-life Tony Stark. That is, if Tony Stark was surrounded by a rotating cast of nameless models he paid for, lied about where his money came from, distracted an officer during an act of shooting, and drove Stark Enterprises into the ground. To Dan's credit, it's hard to feel any sense of real accomplishment when everything in life has been handed to you. Growing up surrounded by such tremendous wealth must have a real impact on a person's psyche, and I can only imagine how insignificant Dan must have felt having always lived in his father's shadow, constantly in search of a fragment of individuality he could claim as his own. After priding himself on being authentic and- I mean, his dad was also obviously not a very good scammer, as we found out, considering that uh, it's virtually impossible to go to jail for financial crimes in the United States of America. So perhaps it wasn't the best idea to let him control your business, because he was dumb enough to let his fucking son spend money on every dumb shit that you can fucking find. I do not feel a fucking ounce of uh, sadness or empathy for a person like Dan Bilzerian.
he absolutely lives a very sad life okay very 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 sad life alone miserable constantly second guessing himself do not think for a brief moment even that uh, he had any happiness okay no one who is happy needs to spend this kind of money and buy all of his fucking friendships okay and all the women around him absolutely not so if you say better than my rat life well your rat life you can fix don't be like dan bilzerian and up front about the way he lives his life, it's painfully ironic to see how everything is panned out as a result of peeling back the curtain. But it does go on to perfectly emphasize what can happen when a silver spoon chud takes over as CEO of a company while possessing no business experience or a significant level of maturity whatsoever. Dan Bilzerian will lie about anything so long as it makes his image more appealing. Whether it's photoshopping celebrities on Instagram or using other people's money towards his own personal ventures. The very foundation of his credibility is built on deception. He didn't do it on his own, he just got lucky. And if you ask me, Dan is only another spoiled trust fund recipient posing as a beneficiary to the fictional American dream. A reminder- I think everything about him, like every, every part of his brand and the way he presents himself is so gnarly. You know what I mean? Like every part of that is just so incredibly fucking gnarly that uh I don't know I just I feel some type of way about it it's so sad it's so fake it's like manufactured to target some of the most insecure people on the fucking planet you know even if his even if his brand was real it would still be fucking awful but I don't think you know what gnarly means. Gnarly can mean a positive thing or a fucking gnarly injury. So a negative thing. And that's what I mean. Did you say gnarly? Everyone's pinging me? Yeah. Reminder to all of us that his self-made playboy lifestyle is far from the idealistic utopia he wants us to think it is, and that a pristine social media presence can conceal even the dirtiest of secrets. But at the end of the day, I think we can all agree on the worst thing Dan has done. And my first video on Dan was from 2015, and it was my first video to clock in half a million views. So to be completely honest with you guys, well, I gotta give Dan Bolzarian a huge thank you for helping me launch this channel wait this is that guy J this is jay aubrey no right 2015 and it was my first video to clock in half a million views so to be completely honest with you guys well i gotta give dan bolzerian a huge thank you for helping me launch this channel this was a great video dude this was actually a fucking great video jay jobbery is a good video creator in my book unfamiliar with his work until now and happy that i am familiar with it now this is good good as fuck